Good morning, everybody. Good, good morning on this fine Wednesday morning. So let's go ahead and take a look here at our brain stretch. What is your future occupation? What are you interested in? And maybe looking at doing doesn't mean you're set in it. Let me tell you, you, you don't have to be set into what you're going to be doing in the future, but at least you can have some idea of maybe what you're interested in, whether it be cosmetology or a different trade school, or whether it be um, working in the medical field. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I like that, Mia. Awesome. Because I could definitely tell you that being set in your ways, even going into higher education, if you decide to go off into college and decide to do something, it may change because I will tell you, I did not want to become a teacher. I was not a, in line to be a teacher. I did not go to school to be a teacher. I did not graduate high school and say, I'm going to be a teacher. I was actually going to school to be a um, physical therapist. So quite interesting. You can see how well that worked out for me because I'm not a physical therapist. I'm a teacher. So um, again, if you don't even know, and that's okay to not know right now, you are young, um, but just kind of start thinking about it because we are coming to that age of where we're going to have to decide what do we want to do? What is it that we're interested in? What do we want to do to make a living and be an active member in society? So think about it. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to give you your um, note or actually your exam for today. As I go ahead and go over, um, as I go over announcements, go ahead and start opening that exam up. Remember, Class Connect sessions are recorded and distributed for learning purposes. Please do not put any personal information or information of others into the chat box for your protection and the protection of others. Make sure your school appropriate and respectful at all times. And like I continue to say is make sure you are participating. I can't stress that enough. The more you participate, the more you get out of class. The more you get out of class, the better your grade is going to be. All right, so let's go ahead and and, um, get started here and take a look at our at our calendar it is the middle of week 11 of our 12 weeks together I cannot believe we are here it is day 54 of our 61 day adventure we only have seven days left that's still plenty of time to make sure that we get our um, exams in our exams are what we need to focus in on if especially if we are not passing because those carry a lot of points for a little bit of work so uh, make sure we are focusing in on those today is Wednesday May 29th and we are going to be doing the second half of unit 5 which is question 6 through 10 today all right so let's go ahead and um, get that exam opened up with I'm gonna give everybody just another 20 seconds to get that exam opened up with raise your hand as soon as you do have that exam open go 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 All righty, still looking for a couple of us to get that exam opened up. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you, Chris, um, Adam, and Bella. Awesome, Shakori, Karma, and Justice, Joey, and doo -doo 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 -doo. Jared, Hannah, Ethan, Edwin, or Edwin, you're good, Bella, and Adam. Thank you, Karma. All righty, let's go ahead and get started. So we are moving down to question number six. We did the first five um, yesterday. If you did not get the first five completed, that's cool. Just make sure you watch the recording of yesterday to help you out with those first five um, questions of our exam. So we are picking up there at question number six. Question number six is going to be talking about the different types of energy. We talked about a lot of different types of energy in this class. We talked about chemical energy where you have energy that is stored due to chemical compounds and released during a chemical reaction. Okay. Endothermic, exothermic examples are batteries. Batteries go through a chemical reaction in order to release that energy, that electrical, um, those electrons that then flow for electricity. Okay, burning gasoline, that's another um, a chemical reaction that's happening. And then once it does happen, chemical energy is released. The next type of energy we're going to talk about is mechanical energy. Now, mechanical energy is an energy due to motion and position. Okay, now we'll talk more about these two in, de in different or more than a mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is like the big umbrella. Being more specific, what is potential and kinetic energy? Now, kinetic energy is any time an object is in motion, you have kinetic energy. 
okay? Anytime anything is in motion, you have kinetic energy. It could be little motion, it could be a lot of motion, but if it's in motion, it is, has some kinetic energy. Potential energy is when an object has is stored and it's because of its position and height above ground. So if I take my, um, my red ball here and I hold it up high, it's not moving, but it's high and it is, um, it is um, in a position, that means I have full potential energy, just like my little guy on the roller coaster here. He's not moving, but he's at the very highest point of the roller coaster. That means he that um, little guy has 100% potential energy. Now, once he starts moving, he then gains kinetic energy. Okay, so that's important to know as soon as he starts moving. The next type of energy is electrical energy. Now, like we said, electrical energy is movement of electrical current. That's anything that you plug your laptop in, your phone in. That's anything you plug into the wall. That's going to be electrical energy. Electrical energy is also powering light bulbs um, and any other electrical devices. Okay, so that is electrical energy. Now, what's interesting about electrical energy is that it can be generated naturally or from other um, energy sources. For example, the sun. Sun creates light, right? We see light right now. Maybe if it's cloudy at your place, you still see light. It's daylight here, okay? So that means that we do see light and that light is coming from the sun. That light can be converted into electrical energy. Solar panels is an example of that. It captures the sunlight and then it converts it to electrical energy. Um, geothermal is heat okay heat from the earth creates energy hydroelectric is water so the hoover dam is a perfect example of a hydroelectric plant it uses water um, falling from the upper portion of the dam and it creates turbines or makes turbines spin those turbines spinning creates electricity okay so all these different things create electro electrical energy and then finally, light energy is a stream of photons. Remember, we talked about how light energy can be either a particle or a wave. It's still debated today, but it is um, a stream of photons with tiny packets of light without mass that move in either waves or in particles. And we talked about the speed of light itself at 299 million meters per second. All right. So what is our question number six? Our question number six is asking us a couple of different scenarios, okay? And what we are going to be doing for question number six is we are going to be going ahead and deciding what is our starting energy and then what is the energy we end up with, okay? So let's go ahead and do the first two together. And then the last two I will have you do on your own. Now, obviously I'll um, show you how I'm doing it because then at the, at the end you'll kind of understand how to do this. Yours may be scrambled so I'm going to follow what is up on the board so just make sure that you're doing the correct one in your exam. The first one I'm going to do is going to be a fan uses batteries okay that's important to turn on so it turns on that its blades begin to spin okay so what is batteries? Who could tell me in the main chat? What type of energy would batteries be? What type of energy would batteries be? Mm, not really. What happens in a battery that allows it for it to kind of create electrical energy? What, kind, what happens? <clears throat> yeah, good, Mia. Yeah. So we have chemical. So we have chemical energy, and then it, it gets something to spin. Oh, we're moving. So what type of energy do we have when we have movement? An object is moving because it's spinning. What type of movement is that? Exactly, Mia. We have kinetic energy. So we would then say that the starting would be chemical, and the end would be kinetic. So this would be number five in mine. So just make sure you're getting the correct one. That's why I underlined it. Go ahead and make sure you get chemical to kinetic. All right. Now, the next one is going to be a ball is held at rest and then dropped. I'm holding a ball right now and it's at rest. Is this ball moving? Is this ball moving? No, absolutely not, Nadine. It is not moving. So if it's not moving, but it's held high, so it has some position, what kind of energy do I have? 
Yeah, good. So I'm going to look for potential energy to begin with. So potential, potential. Oh, it's right here. Now let's see if this is. Now as I drop it, good, Brian. As I drop it, what happens? The ball starts to move, right? Well, if the ball is moving due to gravity, what kind of energy do I have? Anytime an object moves has this type of energy. Yes, good, Brian. Absolutely. So we have potential to kinetic energy. Ball's at rest. That's potential energy. No movement. And it's at the very highest position. But as soon as I let go, the ball starts to move. If anything is moving, absolutely, Nadine, anything is moving, we have kinetic energy. All right, so let's take a look at the last two. The last two will be done on your own. A blender is plugged into an outlet. I'm going to plug something in. When I plug something in, what, what, are we, what kind of energy are we creating? No answers in the public chat. And then, it, and then I turn it on. It starts, begins to spin. Ooh, I see movement. So outlet and movement are my keywords. Okay. Next, a solar cell uses the sun to provide electricity. That's pretty easy. I am going to go ahead and give you two minutes up on the clock to go ahead and finish up the last two of these. So two minutes up on the clock. When you are finished, raise your hand. If you want to check your answers with me, check your answers with me in the question and answers box. Here we go. Nice, Gracie. Brian, switch it because outlet is not kinetic. That's not what we start with. What do we start with? And then Mia. When you take a look at an outlet, what am I doing? I'm plugging something in, right? What's it creating when I plug something in? Does it create chemical energy? Yes, good karma. Exactly, Mia. So there I am. There's the first. That's my starting. So find that. And then it's creating something, it's making an object move by spinning. What is that? That's my start. Good, Nadine. Yes, good, Mia. That's it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shakori, you got to tell me exactly what it is because all your, um, these answers right here are scrambled in yours. So I don't know, my one is different than your one. So you got to just kind of tell me. Yes, good karma. Yes, good Nadine. Okay, so an outlet, is that having to do with light? Do I get any light from an outlet? That's what results. Now, that's what results in a, um, in a change. So I don't get light. If I look at the um, outlet, do I see light coming out of it? As a result of me plugging something in, I get light. But yeah, good, Shikori. So I don't get light. What do I get, though? Yes, Brian. I mean, I can, I can plug in my cell phone. Do I get light for my cell phone? But I do get something else. What kind of energy do I get? Good. Yeah, okay. Shakur, you got it. 
Okay, you get electrical. Excellent. Now I'm creating an object to move. And remember, we if we have an object that is moving, what type of energy do I have? If something is moving, Shikori, what type of energy do I have? So if I, if I have an object that starts moving, and in this case, the blender starts spinning, what type of energy is that? Anytime an object is in motion, what type of energy is that? So we got electrical. Now we want the movement one. No. Yeah, good, Shikori. Absolutely. So we have this. Good. That's that one. Okay. Nice. That's for the out, that's for the blender. Now take a look at the second one. Nice, everybody. Excellent. Karma, um, Jared and Hannah, Ethan and Bella, Adam, make sure we raise our hand on that one once you have that up. Good, Alexandra. Well, so what's your answer, Alexandria? All right. Excellent. Remember, what does the sun give us? It's daytime. What's it give us? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. Keep working for those of you who are working. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to seven and eight, okay? Now seven and eight are going to talk about the different types of circuits. We have a series, good, good Alexandria. That would be our ending because it gives us electricity to the city, but what's our beginning? What does the sun give us? So we're gonna talk about the different types of circuits. When you take a look at the different types of circuits, we have both a series and a parallel circuit. Now, a series circuit, kind of like a series of books, is one path. We are going to, excellent, Alexandra. So we are going to have one path. We are not going to start a series of books in the middle of the thing and then do kind of whatever we want to. No, we want to follow along. Just like if we were want to read Harry Potter, I'm not going to start a book four and then jump to book six and then jump to book two. It's not going to make sense. The story is not going to make sense. I'm going to start from book one and I'm going to work my way all the way to book number seven. Then the story will make sense. A series is one path. Whereas and parallel, on the other hand, if we bring it back to math, in order to have a parallel lines or two parallel lines, I need to have two lines, right? In order to compare those two. So that's again, two or more lines. In a circuit, I need two or more paths in which that, cir or which that um, circuit follows. Now, what's important here is, and it's a common mistake in anything that we have done, is that students count the resistors, the light bulbs. Do not count the light bulbs. The light bulbs do not tell me anything. If I ask you of the question of how many resistors are, then you can count the light bulbs. But I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you the different pathways. In order to do that, the best way to do is follow the wire from the energy source. In this case, it's a battery. So I'm gonna follow the wire out from the energy source and I'm gonna follow it one way. There we go. And then I'm gonna follow the wire again from the energy source out again in a second way. So since I have more than one pathway, I have one and I have two different pathways, I'm going to be dealing with what type of circuit? Two or more 
pathways. What type of circuit am I dealing with? Let me know in the main in the public chat. If I have two or more pathways, think of like Think of what the words mean, series or parallel. Give it a try. If you're unsure, take a guess. Okay, good, Brian. Now we'll, we'll, we'll get there in just a moment, but what type of circuit? Yeah, good, Alexandria. Yeah, I have a parallel circuit right here. Okay, let me explain why. Okay. Remember, like we talked about, a parallel circuit is two or more different pathways. So since I have a pathway here, one, and then I have another pathway around, that is two different pathways. Just like I need two lines in order to create a parallel line. I need two or more pathways to create a parallel circuit. Now, coming over here, I'm going to follow my line again. My resistors do not count. Do not count the resistors. They mean nothing to me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come from the energy source, which is the wall, and I'm going to come out, and I'm going to go around, following the wire, and go back in. How many pathways do you see here? Yeah, good, Alexandria. I only have one pathway. So if I only have one pathway, what type of circuit do I have? Good, Alexandria. I have a series circuit. Just like when I read a series of books, I'm going to take one path from book one all the way to the very end. Good, Mia. And that is one path for me to take. I'm not going to take a bunch of different paths because it's not going to make sense. Okay, so I'm going to take one path. Series, one path, parallel, two or more. All right. Now, let's look at question number seven. Question number seven, everybody's different. There are three different versions of this. Question number seven is going to ask me, how many pathways do you see? That's going to be the first thing that you are going to answer in part one. How many pathways do you see? The second part is, is it going to be a series or parallel circuit? Let me review what those two are again. Series, one pathway. Parallel, multiple pathways. So right now, for question number seven, I'm going to give you one minute and 45 seconds. If you want to check your answers with me, you can check your answers with me in the question and answers box. But please make sure you tell me what version. <coughs> You're going to tell me the number of pathways and then whether you have a series or parallel circuit. All right, here we go. When you are finished, like always, make sure you raise your hand when you are done. One minute and 45 seconds going up on the clock. Go, go, go. All right. All right, so just checking for question number seven, Shakori, Nadine, Karma, Justice, Juliana, Joshua, Jared, Hannah, Ethan, Ed, uh, Chris, Brian, and Bella. We are just doing question number seven right now. Yes. Uh, take a look. All right, if you're on version um, A, Joshua, take a look again. You got the correct circuit. You got the correct circuit. Take a look again for um, question number A. All right, 
let's go ahead and move on. Let's look at question number um, eight. Same thing. How many pathways do you see? Now, remember, that's going to be right here. How many pathways do you see? Common mistake is we count the light bulbs. Do not count the light bulbs. Follow the line from the energy source back around. How many pathways do you see? And then what type of circuit do is that? Again, refer back to question number seven if you need help. Refer back to question number seven. All right. I'm going to give you another minute and 45 seconds. When you are finished, go ahead and raise your hand. Go, go, go. Joshua, did you um, did you look at your version again and count the um, pathways again? You got the part two correct. You just need to look at part one on for question number seven. Yep, good, Mia. Joshua, is that for um, question number eight or seven? Take a look again. Go from the energy source through, go from the energy source through, go through the energy source through. Not. If you have version A, take a look at it again. How do you get five? Hold off on that one, Joshua. Go do number eight, and then I'll come back to that one on um, at the end of class, okay? Don't submit. How many pathways do you see? Everybody is going to have a different version, so just make sure that you look at your version. I have the different versions up here on the board. And then name your circuit. Okay, excellent. So Aisha, Bella, Brian, Chris, Ethan, and Hannah. Joshua, Juliana, Justice, Karma, Mia, Shakori. When you're finished, make sure you raise that hand. Awesome, awesome. Nice job, Shakori. Nice job, Hannah. Last call. Nice job, Joshua. Mia and Justice, Ethan and Chris, Brian and Bella. Awesome. All right. Let's go ahead. We we are doing eight. Yep, we're doing eight. All right, so let's go ahead and go back now to number nine. Now, number nine, we got to kind of bring all of this together. We're going to bring a series and parallel circuits together. We know a series circuit is one path. We know a parallel circuit is going to be two or more paths. So when you take a look at this particular graph, we saw it before, we are going to know that we are going to have multiple paths here, right? We're going to have one right here. We're going to have one right here, another one right here, and then finally another one at the very top so with a grand total of four different pathways. Now, when we look at this and let's just say one of these light bulbs burns out, let's say this pink one burns out. What's going to happen here is that all of these are going to go out themselves. So the row that that light bulb burned out in is a series circuit. Okay, so the row is a series circuit. But we also have a parallel circuit because in the case of that one um, light bulb burning out and all of these going out, what happens is, is these light bulbs, all the other light bulbs are in that parallel circuit, so they stay on because there is another path for that electricity to run through. It can't run through the top one anymore because that light bulb has broken it. There has been a, a interruption in that circuit. So 
that is no longer, that is a series circuit up there. But everything else is on a parallel circuit because there is more ways for that electricity to move through. Okay, now let's take a look at our question. Our question is going to ask us three things. I need three answers on this question. The first question is going to ask us, what row did your light bulb burn out in? So if I go back to this, I'm going to say, okay, it looks like the third row is where my light bulb burnt out. That's all it's asking me, that first part. The second part is going to ask me, is that broken light bulb in the same row, is that going to be on a series or parallel circuit? Well, we talked just talked about that. This row right here is going to be on a series circuit because all of these light bulbs are going to go out. Now, that is why it's going to be on a series circuit. Everything else, the all the other rows are going to be on a parallel circuit because there's going to be multiple different pathways and for the electricity to move through the other rows. Okay, you see how that works? So all the other rows are parallel. The line, the row with the light bulb is going to be a series. All right, so you are going to answer those three questions. What row is your light bulb burnt out in? Is that same row in a series or parallel circuit? And is the other rows in a series or parallel circuit? I'm going to give you a minute and 45 seconds to get that one in. Okay, hopefully you've all been following along so you understand that. So a minute and 45 seconds. I'm gonna review what I just talked about. So take a look at your answers. The row that the light bulb burnt out in is in a series circuit because all of these go out whereas all the other rows are going to be on a parallel circuit because there is more than one pathway for that electricity to move. All right, one minute, 45 seconds up on the clock. Here we go. When you are finished, raise your hand. Go, go, go. So Ryan, what on question number nine, what are we, what do we, do we have an understanding? Because I'm confused on what I'm seeing in the chat box. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay. Yes. Okay. The la second and third are correct, but take a look every version has a light bulb that goes out. What is the row that your light bulb went out in? That's what the first part is, the first one. There you go, okay? So you're gonna put, good. That's exactly right. All right, beautiful, my people. Nadine and make sure we get, oh, there you go, Alexandria, nice job, Karma, nice job, Nadine, Bella. Good, Chris, Ethan, Hannah, uh, Joshua, Justice, and Karma. Make sure we get those hands up there. All righty, my friends, we're almost done. We got two more minutes. We got this, we got this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the last one. Now, the last question is really pretty simple. We are going to go ahead and find the total resistance of this circuit. Now, in order to find the total resistance of the circuit, we add up the resistors. We have five, we have seven, we have three. So all I'm going to do is I'm literally going to add all three of those resistors, five plus seven, plus three. That should give me 15. This would be my total resistance of this particular circuit. Now, we also have to make sure that we use the correct um, units, which are ohms, okay? So when you take a look at your question here, and again, everybody's answers are going to be different, you are going to see three different numbers right here at the very top. What you are going to do is you are going to add those numbers up. That's all you're doing is adding, add these numbers up. Now, 
please use a calculator. Don't, don't try to do this in your head. Google one if you don't have one or use your cell phone. But you are going to add these numbers up. What's important here is that you get the correct units. The correct units are down here at ohms, O-H-M-S. I will put the units in the chat box here. So units will be right here. Units will equal ohms. So there you are. So you can copy and paste it if you need. But I'm going to give you just about a minute and 30 seconds to add up and put your answer into the, the number answer right here. And then you put your units in there. Once you are finished, go ahead and raise your hands. So a minute and 30 seconds. Here we go. On your mark, get set and go. And Shakori, don't forget to get your units, O-H-M-S. Make sure you're adding up resistor 1, 2, and 3. You're adding all these up together, grand total. <clears throat> yeah, if you would like, Mia. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Alrighty, let's take a look here. So Karma, Jared, Ethan, Chris, Brian. Um, we can, Hannah. It just, it just all depends. All depends what you need. Yes, Alexandria. Uh, yes. All right. All righty, let's go ahead and then and go to this point. Absolutely good job, everybody. So at this time, if you feel comfortable, go ahead and submit, uh, push that uh, blue button and push submit. If you are not, make sure your questions are saved. You have a little check mark and saved and you can always go back through to the recording to make sure that you have the correct answers or you have a correct understanding, okay? So with that being said, if you can, go ahead and submit it. If not, just exit out. Then they will be all your answers will be saved. Don't click submit. And then if you are finished, let me go ahead and grab your attendance link. And then I will turn off my recordings. There we are. Excellent. There is the attendance link. Once you have your attendance, then you are free to go. Have a wonderful afternoon.